The Marvel Cinematic Universe is getting godly in Phase 4. Eternals, the 26th movie in the sprawling MCU, is hitting theaters in 2021, about a team of heroes you may know nothing about. Here's everything you need to know about Eternals and how the film fits into Marvel's Phase 4. You are about to meet the greatest warriors the world has ever known. Eternals was officially announced on July 20, 2019 at Comic-Con in San Diego, with a slated premiere date of November 6, 2020. Unfortunately, when the coronavirus pandemic inevitably led to a total reshuffling of the MCU slate, things changed. With theaters around the world shuttered, Black Widow ultimately ended up being moved to May 2021, making 2020 the first year without a Marvel movie since 2009. Eternals was given a new release date of November 5, 2021. Fortunately, this schedule actually stuck. Marvel fans have been hearing news about a film based on the Eternals comics being in the works since the spring of 2018. Three and a half years later, they'll finally get to see him. Even longtime Marvel fans might not be too knowledgeable about who the Eternals are and their role in the Marvel Universe. After all, they appeared in a relatively limited run of comic books in the mid-1970s and 80s. The storyline was revived for a miniseries by Neil Gaiman in 2006, which brought these characters into the modern Marvel Universe. So who are the Eternals and what is their significance? According to Marvel lore, an alien species called the Celestials visited Earth millions of years ago and began carrying out experiments on the inhabitants. Naturally, the results of these experiments weren't always a net positive for our planet. The Celestials were the original creators of the Eternals, beings that looked like humans yet possessed abilities like flight, mind reading, and unbelievable strength and endurance. Their superpowers and resilience made them essentially immortal and indestructible. But the Celestials' experiments were also responsible for the creation of the Deviants, another group of humanoids who were burdened with genetic mutations and typically grotesque in appearance. Humans mistook Eternals for gods, and the Eternals often clashed with the Deviants to protect humanity. However, the Eternals weren't unfailingly perfect. As we'll likely see in the film, they can be misled and instigate conflicts among themselves. At this point, we've met countless characters from the original Marvel comics in the MCU. Have we been introduced to any of the Eternals yet? Eh, sort of. It hasn't been mentioned in the movies yet, but Thanos, the most formidable enemy of the Avengers so far, was actually the child of Eternals. If that seems a little confusing, that's understandable. The Eternals were supposed to be protecting humanity, not wiping it out, and they should be able to physically blend in among humans. However, it's safe to say that Thanos was a bit of a wild card, because he also possessed a recessive deviant gene, which explains his purply appearance. Obviously, lots of things can change in the journey from the comics to the MCU, so we wouldn't necessarily use him as an example of the Eternals or Deviants to come. Given that the MCU has never shied away from streamlining or changing its characters' dense histories for the screen, it's entirely possible that Thanos' comic history as an Eternal-Deviant hybrid may not even come up. Eternals actually shares a connection with another film in the MCU. In Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, Peter Quill's father, Ego, tells Peter that he is a Celestial. A Celestial like a god? Hmm. Small G, son. He's portrayed as extremely powerful and possesses godlike abilities. Ego is millions of years old, and he is able to manipulate the matter around him. By the time we meet him in Guardians Vol. 2, he has managed to form a whole planet around himself, but he can also inhabit a human body. Yet all of this wasn't enough for Ego. He eventually became bored with mere immortality and decided that he wanted to turn all of the worlds in the cosmos into extensions of himself. But he wasn't capable of doing this alone, so he needed another celestial to help him turn his idea into reality. That's exactly why he became a father in the first place. He hoped his son Peter would become his accomplice, and to ensure that his son wouldn't be led astray, Ego killed Peter's mother. When Peter found out that Ego was responsible for his mother's death, he turned against Ego, and the Guardians teamed up to destroy him. Clearly, the Celestials can have nefarious intentions, and they're not an all-powerful force for good in the universe. The cast of Eternals has rounded out with both rising stars and A-listers. Richard Madden, who rose to fame for playing the ill-fated Rob Stark in Game of Thrones, has signed on to play Icarus. Icarus was known as the Prime Eternal in the comics, meaning that he was more powerful than the other Eternals. He is fueled by cosmic energy, and he can move at super speed and communicate telepathically. His sheer physical strength and agility makes him a formidable opponent in combat. What's this even made of? Vibranium? <laughs> 
And speaking of Game of Thrones, Kit Harington, who is best known for playing Jon Snow, is in the Eternals cast as Dane Whitman. Whitman isn't an Eternal himself, but he is a superhero who goes by the name the Black Knight, and it's likely that he'll have a prominent place in future Marvel films one way or another. You may not have heard of him, but it's worth mentioning that he's been a member of the Avengers and sometimes even the team's leader for a very long time. Who do you think's gonna lead the Avengers? I could lead them. Ridloff was born deaf, and as one of the few deaf actors in Hollywood, she has always wanted to see more representation for her community on screen. Now she's made film history as the first explicitly deaf superhero in the MCU. Her casting also represents a major change from the original comics. Her character Makari was actually a male character, and he wasn't written as deaf. But the reception to this change has been overwhelmingly positive so far, and fans are generally looking forward to seeing Ridloff's portrayal of Makari an Eternal with the power of super speed. Angelina Jolie plays the ageless Eternal Thena in the Eternals cast, a major get for the MCU to say the least. In the Marvel Universe, the city of Athens, Greece, was actually built for Thena, not the goddess Athena, as most would naturally assume. And that's no inconsequential mix-up. Human beings confusing Thena and Athena bred hostility between the Eternals and the Olympic gods of Greek mythology, eventually leading to an all-out war. In Gaiman's Eternals comics, Thena works as a researcher at Stark Enterprises and starts remembering her past as an Eternal through recurring nightmares. Jolie is definitely the biggest name attached to the Eternals cast, and maybe the MCU in general, and she's ecstatic to be part of the evolving on-screen universe. Speaking at San Diego Comic-Con, she said, I'm going to work 10 times harder. I know what we all need to do, we have all read the script, we all know what the task ahead is, and we know what you deserve, so we are all going to be working very, very hard. When Marvel initially revealed the main Eternals cast members at Comic-Con, they left audiences in suspense about who would be playing Cersei. At Disney's D23 Expo, it was announced that Gemma Chan had landed the role. As an Eternal, Cersei possesses powers like transmutation, mind control, and flight. However, she also loves living among humans. She eventually becomes a famous party planner in New York City, entertaining her guests with magic that they believe is mere illusion. Chan actually has a previous and related role in the MCU as the Kree warrior Minerva, last seen getting blown up near the end of Captain Marvel. She's ecstatic to be joining the Eternals cast and having the opportunity to play a new character in the MCU. Posting on Twitter in 2019, I couldn't be happier to be coming back to the MCU to play this iconic character and to work with this incredible group of people. Chan isn't the only rising star joining the Eternals cast. At D23, it was revealed that Barry Keoghan will officially be playing Druig. Druig does have superpowers, but he doesn't use them for good. He's the villain of the film, wreaking havoc in the cosmos and on Earth. Keoghan has wanted to join the MCU for a while. In fact, he even tweeted to Stan Lee about it in 2013, writing, Stan Lee, please make me a superhero. Now he's finally achieved his goal. Yogin caught the attention of critics with his performance as George Mills in the Academy Award-winning film Dunkirk, and went on to star in the psychological thriller The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Most recently, he played a role in two episodes of the critically acclaimed HBO series Chernobyl. Druig definitely represents a different type of role for Kyogen, but clearly he's been waiting years for a shot at landing a part in the MCU. Now it's his time to shine. Overall, the cast of Eternals is stacked, with a few other names new to superherodom that you'll probably recognize. Kumail Nanjani will be playing Kingo, an Eternal with a day job as a major Bollywood star. Brian Tyree Henry will be appearing as Fastos, who basically develops all of the high-tech gear and equipment that the Eternals need. In an apparent first for Marvel, Lebanese actor Haas Slayman will be appearing in Eternals as Fastos' husband, making him one half of the first openly gay relationship in the MCU. Salma Hayek has signed on to play Ajak, who often has to serve as a diplomat between the Eternals and the Celestials. This is because Ajak was originally the only Eternal with the ability to directly communicate with the Celestials. Don Lee is taking on the role of Gilgamesh, an Eternal who in the comics has fought alongside the Avengers on numerous occasions, but has been essentially overlooked until now. Finally, Leah McHugh, the youngest member of the main cast, is playing Sprite. As the name suggests, she's a mischievous trickster whose pranks have always gotten her into trouble. Director Chloe Zhao will be at the helm of Eternals. Zhao is a newcomer to the world of Marvel. These days, of course, Zhao is best known as the director of Nomadland. 
The film won three Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director, making Zhao the second woman in history to secure an Oscar for directing. Zhao's history as an indie filmmaker turned Oscar winner makes her an interesting choice for the director of Eternals. This film definitely represents a new artistic direction for the filmmaker, but there's no doubt that the movie is in good hands. Young Syrian actor Zayn al Rafia has a supporting role in Eternals, and it may be a significant one. While he only appears briefly in the movie's teaser and trailer, apparently as a prehistoric human, Salma Hayek posted a photo with Liam McHugh and Al Rafia, with the caption hanging with the Eternals' youth. Al Rafia himself hinted that he might be playing Namor the Submariner, an Atlantean prince and mutant. Time will tell whether or not these rumors have any truth to them. But if Eternals opens a door to Marvel's Undersea Kingdom and the story of the first mutant, it'll be even more of a must-see movie. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about the Marvel Cinematic Universe are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.